uh, which is about good governance in law, application of good governance in law. I think uh, this topic is slightly off the mark because nobody has ever discussed good governance application in legal systems. It is very close to our, the hearts of our prime minister. This government is working on the plank of good governance. And today, we will try to explore how good governance can be applied in the legal system. On my panel, we have Shri Tushar Mehta ji, who is the additional solicitor general of India. If we talk about gold medals, it's, it's a huge list. I can't read out all, but few of them are late Justice Shri N.G. Shalat Memorial Medal by Gujarat University, late Shri G.D. Shah Medal by Gujarat University, late Shri D.D. Maid Medal by Gujarat University, Shri Nani Palkiwala Medal by Gujarat Law Society, Shri Dolat Trivedi Medal by Gujarat Law Society. He was enrolled as an advocate in 1987. He was designated as senior advocate by the High Court of Gujarat in 2008 itself. He was appointed as additional advocate general state of Gujarat in 2008. And he has been recently appointed as additional solicitor general of India in 2014. We also have advocate Bharat Kumarji on our panel. He's a senior advocate from Supreme Court. He hails from Vijaywada. And he started practicing in Supreme Court since October 98. He is at present General Secretary of the Akhil Bharatiya Adivakta Parishad. I am Manoj Narula. I'm basically a journalist. And I'll try to moderate among the liars in the best way possible. I have done some work on good governance and that's why I was called to moderate this discussion. They say practicing makes a man perfect. And uh, fortunately I am among a fraternity that practices, practices, that keeps on practicing. Good governance has, in India good governance has always been about eliminating corruption, reducing lag times. But good governance has, across the globe, has been something which relates to good intent. Good intent results into good governance, and good governance always takes you to perfection. It's a continuous improvement process. It is adoption of best global practices. It is making a process lean, it is making a process perfect by applying various scientific tools and techniques like Six Sigma, etc. And countries like US have good, good governance as a subject. They, they have certain awards which is given by the president of US himself. So uh, we can understand that good governance is something that tricks, that, that automatically takes you to perfection. Not, not only the genius, but even an average person can deliver perfect results if your processes are perfect. And perfect processes means it's a continuous improvement. To throw light on how we can uh, bring good governance in our legal framework, I would like uh, Advocate Bharatji to enlighten this very learned crowd of lawyers and intellectuals, and which will be followed by Shri Tushar Mehta ji, who will further throw light on how we are going to implement it in our legal system.
ಬರೆದ್ವಿ ಸಭಾ ಐ ಸಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಯಂಗ್ಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಬಬಲಿ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಮೈ ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಸಿ ಡಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಫೈವ್ ಡೇಸ್ ರೆಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ in those five days rigorous test there is one test that is known as situation reaction test it happened with me like that few days back when manoj ji and kaviraj ji has come to my office and told that i have to address on good governance in legal system immediately the first incident which occurred to me was ellen mishra case famously known as anand marg sect case going back to january 2 1975 when he was the railway minister of our country he has gone to samastipur to inaugurate the samastipur broad gauge way and at the time of inauguration on the dais there was a bomb blast and he was seriously injured he was taken to danapur which is 150 kilometers away from samastipur in a passenger train and people who are from bihar or who knows about the geography of bihar very well know that after samastipur there is darbhanga which has a high medical facilities when the train has gone up to that place which is 150 kilometers away they might have taken him to the patna where medical facilities are there being a railway minister of our nation and many of you might be not be knowing that in 1975 there are private saloons where the railway ministry is fetched in spite of that he was carried in a passenger train and this incident after 40 years came into limelight when one of the advocate is an accused in that case he was 27 years old at that time and now he is around 60 years he had already had an heart attack then he came to the supreme court saying that the trial is pending for the last 40 years out of my defense witnesses of 37 31 died in order to prove my innocence what can be done now 40 years no who will be knowing the angels when they become the public prosecutors who will be knowing the distance of samastipur danapur and who will be knowing that the prayer private saloons there and who will be knowing that no post mortem examination was conducted so after 40 years still the judgment is not pronounced this is the negative side of the coin but i feel that where there is a will there is a way and i give you one more example famous bittu mohanty case he is the son of a former dgp orissa then he had a friend of german friend then they went to alwar and it seems that he tried to attempt a rape against that lady immediately she has sent an sms to the german embassy within no time he was arrested at the alwar police station and hats off to the jaipur fast track court which has given the judgment within 20 days and that man was convicted and later on he was absconded but he was again arrested seven day acha no seven days case was in that bihar case where it was two within two days in bihar the trial was conducted and 2006 subsequent after this so this is the positive aspect of the judiciary we have a ln mishra case we have bitu mohanty case so where there is a will there is a way then coming to the aspect of good governance 
recently have seen UNDP, United Nations Development Programme Human Index Report. About 187 countries participated in that one. And our country was ranked as 135th. Out of 187 countries, we were ranked as 137. And when you see the UNDP report of 2013, our status was 136. Now today we are 135. So that's why I'm thankful to the organizers that they have chosen the topic of good governance. The four core elements of good governance are transparency, democracy, financial stability, then access to information and reporting and evaluation. Now I will come to the aspect of transparency in the legislation process. For that I will give you one example. Most of you know that in order to come to Bharat, the ships have to navigate from Sri Lanka and then reach our country. So in order to curtail the distance, central government and Tamil Nadu, they have started a Setu Samudram canal project. And about 2,240 crores was the estimate expenditure. Then some of the actors, Oscar Fernandez, Kupuramu, they agitated against that project, saying that the fishermen's, lacks of fishermen's livelihood will be lost. The natural plants and fish will be extinct if this project comes. And they have filed repetitions petitions in Chennai High Court. The same was dismissed. The matter was carried forward to the Supreme Court. Initially, Supreme Court declined the stay, but subsequently, the Supreme Court has stayed the project. Then government has realized that when 2,240 crores project was stalled by an order of the Supreme Court, there should be some remedy. Then the Green Tribunal came. Now the Green Tribunal courts are functioning. And when Green Tribunal came, the bill says that the definition of the agreed party that agreed party means if Setu Samudram Corporation seeks permission from the MOEF and if Setu Samudram doesn't get a permission, then that corporation is the agreed party. But if Setu Samudram Corporation gets the permission and the fisherman livelihood is lost and the fishes plants will become extinct, then the fishermen are not the agreed party. So this is a draconian law. So in our country we have a transparency. So when the bill was placed to the stakeholders, some of the activists like you has brought to the knowledge of the uh, minister, Mr. J. Ram Ramesh. So this definition of a group party is absurd. Immediately the definition of a group party was changed. So this was the achievement of the activist lawyers like you. So we have a transparency in our system. Next, democracy in the decision making process. I will give you one more example now. When, how many of you, you sitting here having Aadhaar cards? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. At least 60% are having Aadhaar cards. 70, okay. Why the rest of the people did not take the Aadhaar cards? What is the reason for not taking the Aadhaar card? Huh? There was confusion. Huh? It was not mandatory. Okay. So I will not go into the issues of whether it is useful or not. I just want to bring to our knowledge. When this 
unique identification bill uid bill came into picture then the bill was referred to the standing committee standing committee stoutly refused saying that this bill can't be come into picture because the uid bill says that every resident of the country is entitled for the aadhar card that means a person who is residing on the pavements without having any roof he is also entitled an aadhar card that is aadhar number uid number that means the infiltrators from pakistan bangladesh and other countries who have illegally migrated to our country and if that man is found residing anywhere then he gets the aadhar card once you get the aadhar card what are the benefits you get if you go for a sale id registration you need an aadhar card if you want a gas connection you get an aadhar card if you want to have a bank account give the aadhar card if you want to enter in airport show the aadhar card that means what all the privileges which the citizen is entitled he is getting the benefit from the aadhar card indirectly the infiltrators were given citizenship status by the aadhar card the example which i have given that green tribunal bill there was a consultation with the stakeholders but in this case in this democratic process what did they do when the standing committee of the parliament stated it cannot be implemented what the government has done in spite of this showing the errors the government has launched the project worth thousands of crores of rupees by an office memorandum by an om so the activist like you one justice puttu swami from karnataka he is a retired judge of the 